Welcome to another episode of the Choco Bros. I'm your host, Samson Knight Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. And before we get started, we want to do a special shout out to CarsVBLease.com for sponsoring this podcast. Uh, James Lockwood continually goes above and beyond, and we are super excited to see him back writing articles again. Uh, I don't know if it'll be a daily thing, but it's it's <laughs> dope. Um, either way. So thanks and again, course. James, for this podcast. And uh, Cody's excited because he got player of the uh, month, right? Sir Argath over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, went from, uh, I went from Dice Dog to Argath. So. Is that an upgrade nice. or a downgrade? I don't know. I actually, I don't know. <laughs> well, I, I like Argath more, so we're gonna I'll say about, We're going to see about maybe hats for a national, so we'll see about that here. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. anyway, so let's go ahead and move on. Uh, so this past weekend, uh, you guys went to uh, an LQ uh, to try and earn Zach his, his – uh, oh, Miami, okay. Uh, to earn Zach his invite. Try him. Um, so <laughs> unfortunately uh, – Hey, yeah. we, we did our part. Um, <laughs> all right, so we'll go – I guess I'll start with uh, Sam. Uh, how was your experience out there? It was good. Um, typical $20, four packs. Um for entry, dice, promo, I'm mean, good value. I ended up giving uh, my entry stuff away. Um, what do I kept the pack? I'm not that crazy. I kept the, <laughs> well, at least I kept the foils. I gave all the other stuff away. Um, it was good. We, uh, it was five, it was four rounds, um, which made it, it, it made it awkward. Um, I've expressed my disinterest in a four round t- cut um, when you have, the appropriate number of players for what I think is top eight um, because you have an X one who doesn't make it. Um, and that's real field bad. Um, yes, and, it is. and people, it is people, bad. people don't, I don't know. I've had people like argue like against the math for other things, but like the math is pretty cut and dry. It's why they do it the way they do it in magic. It's the way the DCI and Wizards Coast handles it the way they do. Um, I don't think an X one should miss top cut ever. Um, and I don't think there's a number of entrants ever that X1 misses um, in Magic. So, sure enough, we had Adam Lane who missed at X1. I believe it was Adam Lane, right? Um, and now we have Zach who missed top cut on X1. Even more feel for uh, feel bads was Andy's opponent was my tiebreaker for the very final round. And they're all talking all around my head. In the very last round, me and... Um, <laughs> And Sergio were both undefeated. They're talking. I have the game line like winning play in my head, but I cannot tune them out. And I was trying my best. It was so frustrating. I should and I should have asked them to to walk away or to leave. Um, and I just made a misplay uh, that lost me the game. And I I literally he was dead on board. I even showed him afterwards. I was like, yeah, I just have to arise the cognazo there. And I knew it as soon as I accidentally arose the Layla Viking, um, just because I was so like frustrated by their their conversation. But that tiebreaker might have actually put zach into andy's spot um yeah and then i ended up conceding to andy in the semis uh because i'm qualified and i love andy carmona he's one uh, badass guy and i want to see him qualified uh that being said i would have been in the same situation i would have conceded to zach too um but Andy and I played it out, uh, or played a game out anyway for for the trophy, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I could feel good about it. Um, but then um, I conceded. I thought it was the right thing to do, um, and then it was up to Jonathan to kind of try and block for uh, Andy. But Sergio got through, um, so it was Sergio uh, on mono water versus Andy on mono lightning. And the, um, the old finals. epic match of the ages. <laughs> it was, and it looked pretty bad. It, it really did. It looks pretty bad for Andy. Um, but you know he 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 played well and he got really lucky on some of the the hits. There was a lucky ex burst cyclops that killed the Leyland Viking from Sergio, um, and he won. So it was pretty sick. Congrats to Andy. Um, and he won two zero, correct? Like he didn't drop a game on the in the finals. Is that correct? No, he went to game. Th- no, he went to game three. Oh, it was game three. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he had a lot of people blocking for him too. You had a lot of people blocking for you. It's um, like a turf war. Yeah. <laughs> this is what happens at the end of the season. Next week in Orlando, uh, they're gonna show up. And they're gonna help us block for Zach. So I'm super uh, stoked for that. Uh, the actual tournament went as expected. Like all my rounds um, went by uh, pretty slowly. I played mono water. Um, 
but it just the, the deck felt really it felt easy mode like i didn't struggle at all and i only the only game i lost to was to mon the mono water mirror and only because i made a misplay which is my fault but yeah it, it, you know if you're looking for something not very interesting to play just play mono water it was boring and good um there wasn't much else to talk about from my perspective um if we were talking about the night before the LQ, it'd be a whole different story. story. <laughs> like what we what we call uh, what was it a level six outing? Uh, he um, he called it. It was gonna be a level three. And went it was to gonna level be level three. It is start. It started yeah. be. It started at level three. Um, and you know they're real advanced in Miami. Um, <laughs> yeah. So it it got up. To, it got up to a real high level outing. Um, needless to say, I was literally drunk walking into the, the LQ. Yep. From the day before. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it was. I, I I woke up, tried to take a shower, was falling into the walls. <laughs> it was it was so ridiculous. But it was fun and I was on mono water, so it didn't matter anyway. Like I just <laughs> I just played Cognazo and I just pushed some dudes forward and stuff. It was fun though. It was a good time. <laughs> Definitely. Well, yeah, I was yeah. pretty shocked uh, when you guys messaged me and said that Zach didn't make it at X one and I was like, I I didn't even know that was possible. Uh, so Zach, let's hear uh, your perspective on it. Um, so I mean, just the X one in general. I mean, I also agree that there's a feels bad with if there's a singular undefeated person, that's kind of where the round should end. But I all that also creates a situation where we had where was there was a four zero and then a bunch of three ones and then there was a feel bad for the three ones. So I don't know where the balance is there. I, I think Sam has a little more experience with that than me, so I'll trust him on that. But. Uh, it certainly is annoying if you go into a tournament or in the next round as an undefeated and you have to play again to possibly not be undefeated anymore. Um, I don't I don't know why there's a difference between X2 and X1. Like, if some X2s make it and right. some X2s don't, I'm okay with it because it feels like X you have to be X2 and then be lucky to get in. And, and if your opponent's... Um, it feels like it comes more down to breakers than even because um, you have a whole extra round usually. And definitely mm -hmm. com it comes more down into the breakers. So if an X2 misses, it still feels bad, uh, for sure. But an X1, like, in a best-of-one type of game, I think that – I don't think that that's okay. I think they need to work on that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, in a yeah, best-of-one, you lose a single game, and then you're out of the top cut. I just – yeah. Yeah, anyway. if you put it like that, it sounds pretty rough. <laughs> it felt pretty rough. Uh, right, yeah. I, I can only really imagine – um but i mean the rounds themselves uh like sam was saying like it was pretty smooth uh the one game i did lose um i, I mean there was one point where i should have made a different decision and it probably would have been a more positive game but there were no major mistakes made i just drew four forwards and had no ways to attack or block like i had the perfect backup development i had the perfect like answers and everything and my opponent stumbled and uh sam i think your audio went out yeah, I was saying that was a, that was just the one game you lost too. So yeah, yeah, and like I controlled the backups with my Hecaton, and like things were great. But I just yeah, I drew no way to close the game. You drew seven forwards the whole game, right? Uh, well, I had five forwards go to damage, and I drew four. Oh, okay. So you drew four forwards total. Yes, and that includes one I tutored. Actually, so five actually, because I tutored one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so like I just I couldn't I literally couldn't block. <laughs> so you handled it well though I thought I thought you I thought you it, handled it well. I would have been much more upset. Like I yeah. I think and that's something I'm working on. We should definitely cover that topic at some point, but you handled it really well. Frustrating, but the thing is I tend to get more mad about when I make a misplay or when it's something that I did wrong or like there's some there's a strictly a wrong thing I did. But when it comes down to just literally drawing poorly and like I don't I can't identify like something major mistake I did besides the one I um, discussed, but it wasn't necessarily wrong at the time. It was just less optimal. Um, it doesn't make me feel as bad. It's just kind of like, well, I can't control it. I'd rather focus on the things that I can control uh, when it comes to a loss like that. Yeah, I guess I, I guess I'm generally in the opposite. Like, I feel bad and get frustrated when there's something I can't control. It's the reason I don't play Magic anymore. Um, mm -hmm. And not to say there's no skill in magic, but skill magic is a very skill intensive game. I don't, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it feels bad when you draw no lands, and that does happen. Oh, of course, yeah. And absolutely. um, and the mulligans are. I, I like the mulligan in Final Fantasy a lot more. Um, but but that's it. Regardless, I I feel like if there's something I couldn't do, that's so frustrating to me because there's nothing I can get from that situation. That situation, even though it's past, 
uh, there was nothing gained at all. Whereas if I make a misplay right. and I can identify it, I've gained something. And even if I'm, even if it's a small incremental advantage, I've learned from that, and I will certainly not forget that. Um, yeah, I tend like to for me, study those things. Yeah, I played like a star Sybil and searched a backup to get like the per like the perfect setup, where I should have just gotten a Camelot against Mono Lightning. Like, correct, right? That's yeah, stuff like that. Like, yeah, that's probably a mistake that may have changed the game. But um, other than that, well, like, certainly because yeah. you could have gotten Camelot into Chaos, uh, or you could have gotten Camelot into Nidhogg, so you certainly wouldn't have. I mean, obviously, with shuffle, so things would change. That's right. the obvious that's, part. That's, that's, the, that's the butterfly like, effect a part. Yeah. <laughs> but the but the Camelot is a, a problem for um, the lightning deck, as is a Nidhogg. Um, so yeah, the thing is, is they can't make you discard, and they don't put you under that much pressure too early. Mm -hmm. So a Nidhogg and like a Zemus can be like game breaking. I feel like uh, they can discard mm -hmm. things like the Lua special, and often the the lightning decks are like trying to ramp back up, so they actually go down to a low amount of cards. And I feel like the Nidhogg actually kind of shines in that situation. But... Yeah, I mean, he was stuck on a, a turn one, one CP summoner, and that was it. Right. Like, he had no other backups, eventually played a Lulu, right. immediately got blown up. Like, and you're yeah. going to lose those games. Those things are going to happen. Yeah. And and that's okay. But you mm -hmm. really, besides the Camelot play, I don't think there was much to talk to you about after that. Like, that was the one thing um, that I thought could change. But right. you, you can't really learn much from that loss or from the LQ experience in total because you only lost one game. Yeah, and the other games, not like, to... not to slight my opponents, but, like, they weren't hard. Well, that's what <laughs> like, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The deck's amazing. I drew well. Like, Yeah, I was going to say, not to say, like, that uh, you can't learn something from winning. You can't. <clears throat> and mm -hmm. you should be learning from winning, um, as long as you're not too biased about it. But, yeah, you just, I, it feels like you just don't learn anything if the mistake had nothing to do with you. But Right. Yeah. But, uh, right. yeah, and then, I mean, Sam covered what happened in Top Cut uh obviously i didn't make top cut so i don't have anything really to add yeah. to that other than you know i watched the games uh here and there i was kind of just talking on the side and chatting with yeah. people but congrats but. to those uh the three uh miami players that all are qualified we have alejandro Absolutely. now qualified we have uh jonathan qualified and now we have andy carmona i would love you know i don't know if um sergio's gonna come out and battle zach for that spot but i'd love to see him again and and, and good luck to sergio if he does come battle that'd be dope um because uh, i think sergio did go to nats last year it'd be cool to see him go this year again um that being said uh before we even move on huge huge thank you to alejandro huge alex you are the man that man is a monster um your wife is amazing <laughs> yeah, we're not even talking about the night before um but, but just letting us crash there made this entire thing possible yeah, um for sure and hopefully we helped get get andy qualified um so hopefully it was worth it for you guys yeah, and I'm also sorry to Alex because he had to play his friends four four rounds in a row. All of his Swiss rounds were against either his local friends or one of us. Like Dude, it was, I had to play. To play I had to knew. play um, my friend Ian, who we traveled with. Apparently, I don't remember the game, uh, but they told me <laughs> on the way home that I played Ian. They were like, "Yeah," and then you played. Uh, they were talking about Mono Fire. I was like, "I played against Mono Fire." I was like, "I didn't play against Mono Fire." And then Ian sitting in the back, he's like, "Yeah, we played." And I was like, "In Swiss," <laughs> and I'm like, "They're like, yeah," and I was like really i i i don't remember swiss at all besides round five in which i had a blistering headache that was right about when the hangover hit um so yeah <laughs> yeah i uh i actually had to play uh model fire round one which is uh alejandro's friend that was hanging out with us the previous night and we we're actually helping him tweak his fire deck and all that so as soon as we sat down i knew what it was on which helped sure yeah. uh but he actually made me a little nervous because he had timely bahamuts and had haste things and i had to you know <laughs> play yeah. very patiently to win that game yeah so that being said those alcus are over with nothing we can do zach right. has already purchased his ticket for the lcq which is the last chance qualifier if you missed out on that too bad um that's over <laughs> with but the L the lqs we still have one week left we have uh one coming up this saturday for zach we have one coming up this sunday for cody right is that correct cody yeah, it's the the second LQ in St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, so it'll be like a bunch of the Kansas City guys will be out there. Must uh, be nice to get two. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it, the winner of this one gets a free flight to and from Nationals. Oh, that's so, this uh, one. Nice. So yeah, it's a big deal. So did you already buy your flight? No, I have not. So. Oh man, are you just are you literally banking on? I'm the I'm, I'm I'm risking it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. That's that's an alpha move right there. That I like that, dude. That, that might be that even might more, be more than 
no. the whole qualification thing. No, 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 no. no you're, buying, that, that, you're buying a flight ticket, an LCQ ticket, and you have true. to figure out your plans to stay. Yeah, no, no, that, that's 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 a top dog. That's like Wolf Alpha, you know, <laughs> like Cody's over here like Pomeranian Alpha. <laughs> <laughs> Like he's the top dog like, at the little dog park, so yeah. <laughs> but uh, I don't, I don't really. If I lose, it's not like a big deal because I get to hang out with like Jake Lee yeah. and. Uh, what about in like California? Kyle Peters, what about California? Are there any more? Are we going to see Greg qualify here or Vince? Or, or uh, is Seattle. It not- Oh, there's Seattle. Seattle. Oh, yeah. yes, there's Seattle. We forgot to cut. We forgot to talk about that. <laughs> Seattle is this weekend, right? Yes. Oh my gosh, I'm so so. Good luck to James Howland. James, I hope you take it down or at least top four, at the very least. James, um, whatever deck you're on, man. I I I I've seen you on Octagon every day. I know James is in there grinding. So good luck, dude. Um, that'd be awesome just to ha- have you travel with us. Um, good luck to Vince. Good luck to Greg. Good luck to everyone who has not qualified. Congrats to Dan. Um, congrats to Josh Gardner. Um, congrats to all those guys who who qualified this this weekend. It was a big weekend. I feel like for the grinders. Yeah, it uh, was. You know, I know a couple. I think it was two weeks ago when David Cox uh, qualified too, and he that guy was stressing it too, man. He was stressing it hard, um, but he made it. And I do feel like we, you know, and then we have Chris uh, who does not have a chance locally, but that but that that big dog is is alpha moving. All the way over to LA, and he's gonna play over there. Um, good luck to Chris. Uh, I hope that we can test uh, enough to get you comfortable that you're gonna do it. I feel like there's gonna be a, it's it's gonna be so exciting. I hope that they stream that LQ, the LCQ. Mm-hmm. I think it would be a mistake not to. Um, and I mean, I'm saying have that on site for all the it's mats. So it I is 8:29 um, 2018 <laughs> that I'm recording this. Uh, it'll go out eight. 30, hopefully sometime tomorrow. I'm hoping I have the time. That is plenty of time to line up those streamers. All right. <laughs> Let's get that stream. <laughs> it, it, you know, if you can't stream it, get someone to Facebook Live it. I don't care. I'll tune in. <laughs> Facebook Live it. Someone stand with the camera. We could all pitch in, like, uh, some foils or stuff. Do you want, like, the producer this? chairs? So they can, like, sit, or the director chairs sit, like, way up? Dude, I would pitch in for someone to stand there for the whole tournament. Just Facebook Live. <laughs> There's some battery banks. That'd be dope. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Speaking... We'll, we'll us three will volunteer. Well, me and Sam will volunteer. We'll do the. We can do the announcement. Well, hopefully, I'll hey, have hopefully the Zach has that freedom too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I keep forgetting. Right. Uh, there's also one LQ in uh, Rochester, New York, this weekend as well. Yeah, that's uh, the other one I almost went to. Yeah. So yeah. Zach had his choice of three. He could go to Seattle. Um, he could go to Orlando, or he could go to New York. All three are cool because in Seattle you got the the con, which is awesome. Um. And then in New York, he's got family and a flight there. So he can spend some time with his mom and his girlfriend. And then here, he's got his whole team to back him up. So we see where his priorities are. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. The queue, that's all that matters. Right, which is which is pretty cool. Um, speaking about getting all that matters, how about the Nats swag? I want the Team North America hoodie. Everyone uh, so wants like, that, man. We want to so be wearing like... that walking in top eight. Oh man! Here's Can you the thing, though. Just... There, there's some rivalries in in North America, right? You know, I there's some just people that just aren't getting along. People like to cause drama. It is what it is. But I'm hoping that the eight players that qualify really rally together <laughs> and end the lol na finally. Like, let's end that. You know, like let's right. go back to like lol au. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just. You know, I'm just saying, like, I, I hope that they rally together um, and that we do, we, we produce a strong team for for Worlds. You mean we dope. rally together? So that means you're on the team. Well, I'm hoping. <laughs> no, yeah. Well, I said they because, you know, there's a lot of people. Yeah, so mathematically you. speaking, I the odds are against me. Uh, but, yeah, sure. Obviously, I hope that I'm on the team and I will do my best to rally if I'm on the team. And if I'm off the team, I will grind games like hell to make sure we win Worlds as, as a as a continent, I, I guess I will say, as a region. Right. Um, so if we do have Canada, yeah. In Mexico. Yeah, yeah. And hey, we got some good Canadian players too. Um, I mean, I don't the guy went undefeated did, last year. Did Wayne? Did Wayne qualify this year? I think he might. I can go check the qualified players list because that's actually a cool resource that we have now. Yeah, I'm I not have, sure. I haven't no, seen it, but he had to play Jordan Dank, I believe it. 
at Gen Con in like the top cut, but not in the top four. I want to say it was in top eight of his particular day. Oh, gross! Um, but gross. I I don't know the results of all the Canadian LQs though. Okay, no, it does not appear that he is qualified. All right, well, by the name Wayne, and I don't see it anywhere. Yeah, you know, I hope that he goes down to your LQ, Cody, because last time a uh, uh, LGS uh, sponsored, you know him. And that worked out. That worked out. <laughs> that was real, our local one, actually. Yeah, that worked out real nice for him too. Um, um, that would be a funny yeah. repeat story. Anyway, so national swag sweater. There's a whole bunch of other gear, but sweater. There's like a Bahamut, um, play arts, but sweater. Right. I mean, right, I mean, we want this hoodie, right? I also yeah, like I, the mat. I yeah, just love the fact cool, that like there's a hoodie. There's only eight of those hoodies. <laughs> supposedly are going to be eight of those hoodies in existence, right? Like Oops, being able to say that you own one of those would be absolutely insane. Right. Yeah. And the fact that you earned it, like I earned my way to this. Now I own this crazy cool. I mean, I'm not gonna say collectible item. Cause I mean, I'm sure people are going to wear it and you know, you've got to rep at worlds, but yeah. Right. I'm going to make copies of mine. Insane. <laughs> <laughs> I will make copies and then with, you know, keep the, keep the one in the sealed bag. Yeah, and then not to mention obviously the trip to London. That's sweet. And then obviously yeah. you'll get a world's play. Yeah, but hoodies. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> hoodies. That's, that's yeah. definitely the. Don't you, guys, you guys live in Florida. You don't even wear hoodies. <laughs> we, dude, we get sweater weather. It's in, like in the winter, yeah. it's like late late December when we get it. Just, Sometimes just from like eight a.m. to like twelve, like noon. You you'll wear something there. Uh, and, I can you know, get colder too. Sometimes. Like t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, I can get cold though. Just not not so cold. I kind of wondered how you guys were feeling at the petite cup because it like started pouring down snow while we were out there. I mean, we were there in like March. Oh yeah, you said petite cup. Okay, yep. Sam, you were on mute there for a second, buddy. I heard you. Oh, I said, I, said, I said, yeah, I like, I like the, um, I like the snow, so it didn't bother me any. I don't miss it at all. I mean, I yeah, I don't, I don't, I hate driving in it, but like seeing it every now and then is pretty cool. But, but. Oh, yeah, it's. The hoodie, it'll come in handy if I can win a hoodie. Uh, uh, anyway. Um, now, what about that, the uh, Sephiroth boxes and playmats? Did, did they confirm that we're going to get any of those at Nats, or is it just for the LCQ? I heard there's or, confirmation, but like, I didn't it myself. Something? So, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I saw the top 32 or 31, technically, will get the Sephiroth box as well. Okay. For Nats, so. So, even right. more motivation to day two? All right, so, hey, let's uh, let's talk about the, the elephant in the room. That is the metagame. It is shifting, right? And it is shifting quickly. Um, yes. People don't even realize, like, okay, so let's say the last time you watched Final Fantasy, because the last one was streamed, was, was it? Wait, was it Gen, Gen Con? Con? I think so. Unless you count, like, maybe a store streaming their local event. Sure. The The hey, metagame Jeremy. has drastically shifted since then. Um, and you can tell that if you're playing on Octagon, if you're playing on Untap, uh... If you're just paying attention to what cards people are talking about, if you're part of these Facebook groups, um, water is on the rise. Uh, I wasn't the only person that showed up with water at my um, LQ. There were three. Uh, there were three in the top four. Three of us yes. were on mono water in the top That's four. That's actually true. Yeah, there are three mono waters and a mono lightning. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, yeah, Andy, three. luckily we got Andy's back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but That's yeah. Me. Uh, and the, won German Nationals as well. And, Sa and Sasha Shark won German Nationals. Uh, that Sasha's list is basically where I based off my list um, from. And it was a, a pretty good list. I don't really have any major complaints about it. Um, there was maybe just like one or two cards I, I changed. Um, and Sasha decided to change some cards too. Uh, they let me know. The thing is too is that wins on the rise too. Um, if, you're, if you're paying attention, you're seeing uh, Leviathan 4 decks. Or they're like bouncing their pain, um, yep. which is one of the things that I was testing with and almost played at the LCQ or the LQ. Um, Lightning is back on the rise. Um, trying to think what else. Uh, the Earth, the Earth, um, the Earth Wind deck is still doing very well, winning a lot of events. We saw within the last week to this week, uh, Matiski Icewater Vikings just crushed a ton of events. Uh, mm -hmm. It got a lot of people qualified this last weekend. At least two people, yeah. Yeah, I know it got Josh Gardner qualified. Um, so the metagame is shifting very quickly um, away from this turbo discard. Uh, and I think a part of that is like the Layla Viking. Um, it's it's a way to get on the board. Like if you're on the play, like 
So, you know, in in Swiss, you're going to have the same issues. But in the top cut, like if you know you're against turbo, you can go like turn one Layla Viking um, and kind of put yourself in a situation where you defer your CP. Um, plus, you have board, board presence, which is good. And it allows you to do things like like when depending on the number of cards in your hand, you can attack or block into a Thaumaturge. And that extra card when it bounces will be enough to bring their Thaumaturge down and kill their Thaumaturge. Um, right. You know, you're, so you're seeing a lot of uh, an evolution of decks. You're seeing decks with strictly three Cloud of Darknesses, uh, you know, or, or just Mono Water exploding. Um, I've seen Fasoya been, has been popping up quite a bit online. Um, just just the whole metagame is just changing very quickly. And there's some really cool decks out there. Um, I mean, Mono Fire even is, seems playable. It's a real deck, like, for sure. Yeah, yeah. no, it, it is a real deck. Um, I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if one copy made it into the top eight of nationals that's how good i think it could be i don't think it's good enough to put three or four players in right whereas like i think like ice water viking is like you could see you could reasonably see two to three ice water vikings you could reasonably see three to four uh data luma decks uh, there's probably decks in between there's probably ice earth decks i know uh, okimoto just played one uh and he won his lq with it um so there, there's those decks. There's just a whole bunch of uh, playing around to do with Opus 6. I know a lot of people aren't like huge fans of it. Um, you're not trying hard enough. That's my honest opinion. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it nicely. Like You're just not trying hard enough. Um, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on. What do you, what do you, yeah, what do you guys just think of your thoughts? I about mean, it? I think part of it, and I don't know if you'll agree this has any merit, is people might be getting sick of piloting turbo-wise. Like, we've talked about our experiences playing the deck and like practicing with it. It's just, it's not always fun. Like it's very, I, mean, just I don't think it's fun to play either. No, but... no that, that's what I mean. Yeah. But so I wonder if that's part of it. I don't think so. I think or if like any waiting. sort of, I mean, that that's true. I'll say, or if like anybody has like the peer pressure of, Oh man, I don't want to be hated in my community. Cause I'm playing this. I don't think so. Turbo I think that, <laughs> look, I think that if, if turbo ice is the best deck going, going into national. No, okay. Let me check that back. If Turbo Ice, because there's a difference between the best deck going into Nationals and the best deck to play at Nationals. If Turbo Ice is the best deck to play at Nationals, I will play it. Mm -hmm. Period. I'm going to play what deck I think has the best chance of getting me qualifications, because the trip to Worlds is all that matters to me. Um, because you get a hoodie to go with it. <laughs> um, that being said, I, I don't think it's the best deck. I think it's annoying and it's terrible for the health of the game but um we don't want to get back into that whole conversation again because that's getting so drawn out um right. but i know i think that if, if 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 cody sat down right and you had to say dude you can't play vein because turbo ice is just too good you should just be turning turbo ice i think cody would just play turbo ice i really do i think that you know i think that i could get you to play turbo ice Zach, if we tested enough games and you saw like hey this is clearly the best deck you'll play it so that being said, I don't think it's the best deck, and that's why it's not seeing as much play right now. Uh, people don't like, you know, like if you're taking it to your locals, you're going to split top four, and, and you're going to ruin a little bit of fun. That's fine. Uh, that's easy. Just just take it and crush your, your rounds where your opponent can't do anything about it. But once you're in the top cut and people know that you're on it, um, you're, we're not just talking about people that know that you're on it. We're talking about people who tested tons of matchups against it. They know how to handle it. Um, there's, there's two basic principles. You play your two backups as quickly as possible. Well, you play two big forwards. Um, both are ways to beat Mono Ice, and both of them have ways to get punished. Um, mm -hmm. There's sometimes you're going to play your backups, and then they're going to they're gonna flood you and kill you by, like, turn three. And sometimes you're going to play a, a board, a forward instead. Um, and then they're just going to be like, okay, cool. I'm going to play backups and beat you in the long game. It's a lot harder for Turbo Ice to do that, but, <laughs> I mean, it's possible. So... Yeah, I just think that people are playing the better decks, is my honest opinion. I think the Data Luma deck is just a better deck. Yeah, I mean, I tend to agree. Right. Um, uh, if you guys don't know, you should go read Joshua Freeman Birch's articles on the deck. Um, he's got some articles on Ice Fire too, um, and I think Mono Fire also. Uh, but you know, I I think that I think he's playing Earth Wind. Is that right, Cody? Uh, I he kind of bounces back and forth. I know he played Mono Fire in like your guys' like team match, right? right he's, yeah, he's playing in the um, team but, matches, but uh, but yeah, we me and him grinded probably a good fifteen games the other day on on Untap. 
and uh, he kind of alternated between a few different decks. I was actually testing his Ice Fire against him, so it was kind of funny. Oh, nice. Yeah, what do you think about that deck? Uh, Fire Ice, I think it's, I think it's definitely playable. Um, it's just, it's just tough to figure out the numbers in that deck. Um, That's fair. There's a lot of good, there's a lot of good cards right now. Yeah, I think like, Renault, Zell... Renault shakes things up, right? Renault has got to be the card. Like, if, if there's a deck where Renault is good, it's got to be like Fire Ice, where you have like VVs. Uh, maybe you had Furion, and still, I don't know. You have Zells. Like, there's so many things, that, and those are just your non ice targets. Obviously, you still have Gen Genesis. Uh, you have Devout that gets back the Zell, like Sid Reigns. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, exactly. You could, you can the double make him discard. There's a lot of cool stuff in that deck. Uh, but yeah, I, I wonder if the numbers are just what's holding it back. Um, isn't, yeah. there, isn't there a searcher for Zell too? In yeah, there's selfie. Yep, selfie. Oh no, wait, no, in fire. Oh, in fire. Okay. Oh, there's selfie. Okay. Uh, technically, Renoa would. But That's what I was thinking. But Renoa. then you, you put it. Yeah, but okay, the backup Renoa does search for Zell, but that doesn't help that much. Right. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But no, yeah, I think I think the deck's pretty cool. Uh, cool. The yeah. backup is really the the tough spot. Like, I can figure out the forward lineup, but the backups is usually where I struggle to figure out, like, the most optimal lineup. Yeah, That's when fair. I was talking about the deck the other day uh, with, I think it was Cody and a few others, <laughs> I almost said in chat, and I had to erase it because I realized what I was about to say, I'm like, yeah, why don't you just play Renault to search Zell? Like, <laughs> why aren't you playing this card? And I'm like, oh, wait, there's a legend now that's pretty darn good with the same name. So Right, yeah. It and is unfortunate. The, the old legend this, was pretty good, too, though. The... I was going to say, and that's the same problem that the searcher had in the past was you all the ice decks wanted the Renault legend from Opus 2. It's not. And, it's not impossible. They still want that card either. I'm. I'm not. I'm not convinced that it's not. I like it as a tech good. spot or a tech choice. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it could be really good. Anyway, I think that's all we want to cover for this week. Is that correct? Yeah, just keep it short and sweet. We've been uh, doing a lot of long ones in a row, so. Right. Yeah. Um, little... We're gonna start cranking these out a lot more. Um, the way we're gonna do that is by keeping them a little shorter, so we still get in our octagon uh, testing for nationals. Um, but anyway, we super appreciate you joining us again. I want to do a super, super great shout out to Alejandro for this weekend. Um, congrats to all the players that qualified, especially our baby Andy Carmona. Um, <laughs> and shout out to Cars of Evilise for sponsoring us. Um, did I forget anything? I think that's it. And shout out to Josh Garner, my Gilgamesh buddy, getting <laughs> qualified. I'll, uh, I'll see you guys. I'll see you in Nats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then uh, thank you guys uh, for tuning in. Uh, we do this podcast for you guys. So without you guys, this wouldn't happen. Yep. Uh, if you guys have any ideas that you'd like to, like a topic that you want to hear us talk about, uh, just leave a comment down below. And then uh, as always, just like and subscribe. And we have been the Choker Bros. And I'm Cody Snodgrass. Hi, I'm Zach Bro. I'm Sam Snodgrass. See you next week. With a hoodie on. With a hoodie on. With a hoodie on